Hello, and thanks for joining me. Today we have the Drift Mustang back on the table. This is an RMX by MST. Uh, if you've been following along, we built this up, making it into just a little drift car for me to learn rear-wheel drive drifting with. I've added a few scale details here and there, but there is one big glaring area, and that is this interior. If you look through the windshield here, you can see the guts of the car, and that really takes away from the scale appearance of the car. So I got looking into interiors for this car, where basically like just generic interior kits, so I can adapt one to this car, and there are a lot of them out there. I finally settled on this one. This is the Montan or Montec interior kit. I believe this is they call it the B kit. They have an A, a B, and a C. The A is just like the front seats. B is this one with the driver on the left side and like a paneled style racing interior. And C has is like a rally kind of setup has um, two driver a driver and a co-pilot and then has like a gas tank back here and the co-pilot has a map in their hand or rally notes let's take this out of the package and see what it looks like here it is out of the package i got this from a main hobbies um, they had the best price with the best shipping so that's why i went with them as you can tell it's a pretty detailed interior has the driver there with the lap belts you can see the five point harness has like a curved dash pad or instrument cluster here on the dash. Center console, and like I said, there's like sheet metal layouts here. It feels pretty thick. So that's good. Also came with decals for the interior. Honestly, I will use the gauge decals, but the seat belts, I will be painting those on. I always do on my interiors. So it came with a closed face racing helmet. With the driver's face there, you can see the details on it. But also came with, let me see if I can get it here where you can see it. It's right there. Let me see if I can focus on it. There we go. It's a visor for the driver's helmet. It's a clear Lexan visor, and it came with the hardware to mount it to the helmet. I don't know if I'll leave it clear. I may smoke it with some Tamiya smoke paint. We will see. Okay, let's see how the size looks. Will it fit this body on this MST? Okay, I have the body off the car. Let's see how well this will fit. Mm, actually, it looks like it's going to fit pretty good. I will have to trim it out where I have the roll cage in the car. On the sides there just a little bit to clear the cage. But that won't be no problem. And I'll have to trim it up in the back so it clears the magnets. And of course trim the front down. There's the front and the rear. It'll take some trimming to get it where I need it to be. But I believe this will, in the end will end up fitting this body pretty nicely. I'll be able to have it come all the way back here. Back beyond the package shelf here. So it will hide that part in the rear window. Like I said, it's just about the same width. These sides I need trimmed down here to clear the roll cage. The roll cage. If you watched the video on putting that in, you know how impressed I am with it. Like I said, the front just needs a little trimming up to clear. I'm going to start at the front so I can get good fitment to the windshield with this instrument panel. Just remember, cut slowly. Cut a little bit here, a little bit there. But I'm going to get this fitted up and see how much I need to trim away and what all I need to do to make it cut down enough to fit in there, and then I'll figure out how I'm going to mount it. I'm not sure about that yet. I'll have to do some trimming here for the motor. Of course, to stick up through, maybe a couple other electronics here and there. We'll just have to wait and see. Oh, let me get the trimming, and I'll be back to show you how it fit. As you can tell, I now have the interior in the car. It's just mounted in there temporary for now. But thought I'd show it off how it looks in here. Look in through the windshield here, and you can see the driver. See if I can get you a little better focused maybe on him. Eh, there we go. It's a little bit better, I guess. You can see the driver in there and how he fits inside the car. Let me pull this body off and show you what we're working with. If 
Here we go. You can see I have the body just taped in right now, some blue tape. I decided I'm going to use Velcro on it. I have a monster hole cut right here, but that's to clear the motor. That's where I have the, the upper motor mount, the raised motor mount set up. Um, that's to clear the motor there. And I got little notches here to clear the roll, roll cage and my mounts in the back. I'll use a big piece of Velcro here and a smaller one up here to hold it in place. Let me go ahead and pull this tape off and show it to you from the top. Okay, let's pull this chassis up here. And there you can see how much I had to cut to clear for the motor. Clears all the wires, has a little bit of room around it, and with the tinted rear window, luckily you can't really see it, see in there very well to see the motor in there. But that's how much I had to cut out to clear all that. Otherwise, it's pretty much intact. Um, the driver itself, I ran into a little problem with here. Let's see if I can get you zoomed in on that. There we go. The screws are little Phillips screws for the visor, and they work just fine. The problem is the visor itself, if you try closing it all the way, it doesn't want to close all the way. It doesn't line up very good. The bottom doesn't come down to the notch on the 3D printed head. So I think I'm going to do it with the visor up, but I'm also going to paint the, the visor so it looks like it's tinted black. Or maybe if I have some like holographic vinyl, maybe put that over top of it. The head itself will require just a little bit of sanding. It's a little rough from the 3D printing. It's not bad. A heavy fill primer would probably be okay, but I'm going to give it a light sanding because I use just a real light primer. That way it won't hide none of the details of the face. My next step here is I'm going to paint this. Um, still not sure what color I want to paint it yet. Probably paint the interior majority of it yellow with like some silver aluminum trim. It has a hole right here for a gear shifter. Did not come with one. So I'm going to make a gear shift of some kind to, to go on this panel right here and also make a uh, drift style handbrake. So next time you see this, it'll be painted up and be ready to be permanently mounted inside the body. I'll let you know if I run into any problems painting it, but I think it'll be pretty straightforward. So I'll use um, Tamiya paints for the spray paints. I'll paint the driver's suit, the seat belts, and all that using a combination of Games Workshop paints and Apple Barrel paints. Well, let me get this painted, or let me get this washed up, get the the marker cleaned off of it and get it painted and here we have the finished interior all painted up I'm pretty happy how it turned out and yes I went with some bright colors but my drift car is bright as well so I decided to stick with that bright and garish theme got a little fancy and added stars to it just to carry on with the roll cage parts It all went together pretty well. Um, I did have to add a shifter here. I made this out of plastic card and some dowel rods and beads. Add the shifter and a uh, drift brake here. Shifter has a little button on it for the nitrous bottles I added. I got those off Amazon. You know, drifters do use this, the nitrous sometimes to get up some wheel speed. To mount this in the car, I went with these little Velcro dots you see here. Got them in a package that looked like this. Found these at Walmart. There's like $3.50, $4 for a pack of them. And I added a bunch of dots along the front and the three along the rear. And they mount just right inside the body here. You can see the ones there in the rear. And then up here in the front though, the reason why there's so many is this little edge right here. It's like a little lip. The only place to make contact is right across through here. So I didn't want it shaking loose, so I put enough to make sure that wouldn't happen. Let's take one more look at the interior here before I put it in. So it went together very, very well. The helmet, I had to sand down and make smooth before painting it. And it's still not perfectly smooth, but through the windows, I think it'll be okay. The driver's face, see if I can get in there on that. Got him painted up. The visor I sprayed black on the back side just to make it look like a dark black visor instead of a clear visor. Kind of makes it stand out more. 
And now, we just put it inside the car here, lined up on these Velcro dots, and we'll snap it in place. It actually might be handy if you're going to take this in and out a lot to maybe draw a little white line, paint a line back here at the very back edge. So you make sure you get lined up right every time. Get lined up perfectly where it needs to go. But there we go. Back is in. Front is in. As you can tell now, it's nice and secure. The Velcro should hold it in there without any problems. And take a look here through the window and see how the interior looks. See if I can get my light around here, maybe shine better inside. There we go. Overall, I'm really happy with this interior kit. I wish it had come with the shifter assembly and stuff since it has a spot there in the interior for it. But either way, I'm happy with what I made to make to go in there. It was easy to make pretty quick and I like the fact you can see the drift brake sticking up there inside the windshield pretty good overall I'm quite happy with it and like I said I would use this interior again on a different drift car probably um, or may just pick up a different one just for something well different if I had any advice for this is just take your time mask it off how you want it and paint it slowly um, the paint I used on the body itself, on the, the driver's body and racing suit, is apple barrel paint. Um, just brushed it on in layers and the colors I wanted. And then everything on the interior part here you see is doll coated. If you give it a light doll coat, it helps the decals blend in better. And it helps protect the paint in the long run. Especially in crawlers and stuff where they see a lot of abuse, dirt, mud, water. Okay, let's go ahead and drop this body on the car to see how it completes the look. And there we go. The completed car. Interior is in place. Adds a nice look to the vehicle. You can't really see it through the tinted windows very well here in the picture. But there you, go. you can see them in there peeking out. Part of the reason why I left the windshield clear, just so I knew I was going to put interior in it. And now we can see them in there. This is a nice scale touch of this car. It helps hide all the wires and servos and gyros and everything else going on in here. Even though this is a top mount uh, motor setup with the rear window tinted and everything, you can't really see the motor in there, so it hides that nicely. And the interior, like I said, covers up everything else and gives it a little more realism. I'm really happy with this. Like I said, I would recommend this interior, this Montec interior kit to anybody. They make three different versions. Um, recommend you check them out. Maybe it's the interior you've been looking for for your drift car and I'll help add that just a little bit something extra. Well, like I said, if you like this video, go ahead and make sure you hit that that like button down below. That really helps us out with the algorithm. And subscribe so you don't miss any future updates to this car or any of our other ones or projects we have going on. And until next time, happy RCing!